magnets. How do they work? Hopefully you know what video I'm talking about with that. Today we're kinda gonna talk about magnets. Specifically, we're gonna talk about Deaton force, AKA cogging force, what that is and what implications it has on your motor. So cogging force is a term that is very old, many, many decades old. But when I say cogging, you may be thinking about when a brushless motor starts up and has troubles and it cogs. That is a term that I'm pretty sure that Castle Creations came up with to describe a symptom that they were having on their systems in the early days. And that's not what I'm talking about today at all. What I'm talking about is the cogging force of the motor or the Deaton force, D-E-N, uh, <laughs> uh, D, <laughs> I gotta write this down. I uh, already did write it down. D-E-T-E-N-T, Deaton't, D-E-T-E-N-T. So the Deaton force of a motor is how much force it takes to rotate the shaft from one low reluctance position to the other. Or you could also say the natural position of the motor at rest. When you try to move it from one natural position to the next, how much force does that take? That's our Deaton force. That's our cogging force. The result of a high Deaton force is usually that you have worse startup with a typical startup routine, and you also have a higher holding force on there. It also can be indicative of your torque of the motor. Higher Deaton force generally will tell you that a motor has higher torque density because you have better coupling between the magnets and the stator. And there's a lot of small details that we could really get into, but what I wanna show you is the difference between a few different types of motors what the difference in the Deaton force is in the Deaton force is well, that's a tough one between the models. And then we're going to also talk about how that plays out in the real world. So I've got this little quick and dirty setup to where it's an arbitrary length of an arm and I'm going to rotate the motors to where it's pressing on this scale. And we just want to make sure that we're pressing on the same point. And as long as our motors are the same diameter, then they're going to be pressing at the same angle from the same height. And we should, I'm going to mark it. We should always be pressing on the same point of this lever. So I'm going to mark that just so that we make sure that that's all consistent because our lever arm distance will change our results. If the lever arm distance changes, if that makes sense. And we can actually figure this out in like gram centimeters or ounce inches or something like that. If we did the math, how far is this lever arm? How much is it pressing? But all of this is going to be done with the same test equipment. So it's kind of an arbitrary number for today. And maybe I should write some of these down. We'll, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll do that if we need to later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate this motor and we're gonna watch for the highest grams that we see. All right, I saw three, 3.1, and it goes up and down. It's gonna be variable. There we go, 4.5, that's the, the higher one. Oh, oh, no, no, it was getting hit by the wires here, so we're gonna go back. 3.1, and there's variation. There's, you know, there's always gonna be little variations between magnets, 3.0. But generally, it's going to be, you know, mostly the same in between Deaton positions. 3.6 on that one. I'm going to go back. We're going to measure that one again. Didn't quite get as high. And we want to make sure we're also hitting consistently in the middle. All right. So uh, let's see. 3.3. I'm going slow. If I go faster, I can increase the force. But this one, you kind of get an idea. It's between 2 and 3 grams where it will rotate to the next position. So this was the V1 of the Crawlmaster. The reason why I designed this one with very smooth magnetics is that back in these days, we were using castle controllers. In a standard startup routine where it kind of kickstarts or tickles the motor into action, you need a low Deaton force. And this has been how I've designed motors pretty much since the beginning. So we want very low Deaton force, Smooth startup, very low startup RPM. So that's what we went for. These days, with the AM32 startup routine, we can force a motor to start up at a very low RPM, and it doesn't matter what our Deaton force is. So here's a V2. I'll just pull a new one out of the box for you. 
completely different magnetics, 100% different. And I designed this for as high of a Deaton force as I could get within reason. Uh, because there, there are potential issues when you go too high on the Deaton force. So I wanted to go higher. And then we used the technology of the AM32 to start it up smoothly, just as smoothly as we did before. As you can see, it's a much smaller motor as well. And let's see what the Deaton force is on this. 2.5, 2.9, 3.1, 7 7.7, 8. Uh, so there, there will be some low Deaton positions and some high Deaton positions. And that, that is generally how motors work. Some of them will be a little easier and then some will be higher. That one flashed 8. There we go, 8. Maybe you saw on that. So as we go through, we're going to see a variation. So 6.9. Here we go. Here's the big one again. Uh, 7.9. A little over 8. Definitely 7.9. 8.5 or somewhere in there. eight, nine, that one flash nine. So as you can tell, Deaton force on this one is yeah, roughly three times higher, more or less. Uh, two, let's just say 2.5 to three times higher on this particular one. And that was my goal. The advantage of having the higher Deaton force is that you get much better static hold without burning energy to hold. And with the AM32 as a new startup routine, we can make these start up far slower than a castle can with low Deaton force, but then we get the advantage of the high Deaton force, better torque density because the magnetics are coupled very tightly and it'll hold without actually burning energy trying to hold. So that was my goal on that one. Now let's go through a couple more things, maybe a little quicker here. This is a 540M revolver, just a, a standard build. As you probably know, the 540M is the most equivalent to this guy, but the torque density on Outrunners is typically higher, and that's because we do have a lot more coupling. So uh, let's see, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Peaked at 20. A little harder to rotate the Outrunners because I'm actually having to rotate the motor plate itself and not the rest of it. So I'll make sure I'm not touching anything and skewing the results here. But that tracks with what I know about these, is that it has a higher hold force for the same weight of motor. And we do have a bigger lever arm because our rotor is a larger diameter than an end runner. We also have a lot more magnetics. There, there's a lot more magnets in there. Our flux gap area is higher. And when you have a higher flux gap area, you typically are gonna have more of everything. All right, so 20 is what we flashed on the high end here. Uh, we're getting to, to another big one. That one's about 15. But as you all probably know from experience, the Outrunners, yeah, 15, 16, 17, 18. The Outrunners are going to have a higher hold if they're designed for it. And I designed these to have a relatively high, uh, on the V3s at least, a, a relatively high Deaton force. So... If you're looking for a higher hold and better torque density, Outrunner is going to do better than an Inrunner. If you want higher efficiency, though, the Inrunner is going to be it for you. Now, let's go to brush motors. So, biggest thing, five slot versus three slot. Y'all probably already know what's going to happen here. Five slot start up smoother, so would you make a guess that it has lower or higher Deaton force? If you guessed lower, you would be correct. All right, so let's see, I'm going to restart where I was. Five, six, seven, there we go, seven, flash to seven on that one. And as you can see, there's, there's definitely variation, eight and a half. And let's see, eight. The reason why we don't drill balance our hand wound motors is because it increases the variation of Deaton force. And that makes it where startup is actually a lot less repeatable. Eight and a half, nine. Eight and a half. So yeah, about eight and a half grams on 
the five slot, the Crawlmaster. So what do you think the three slot's gonna do? It has higher torque. We know it has higher hold on the hill. A lot of people really love three slots because of that. So the other one was eight or nine. And what would you wager? Make a guess what this is gonna flash on the highest. 10, 11, 12. Almost 13, I saw it almost 13. 11. And these are drill balanced since these are the experts. 9.1, 9 9.4, 9 10, 12, there we go. So uh, an average on this, I would say maybe closer to 11, that flashed 12 on that particular one. And each one, at least on the sport motors, is going to be a little bit different. But we can just say that this is about an 11. The, the five slot was an eight or nine, and this was between 10 and 12. So three slot, better hold, better torque, better magnetic coupling. The same story with pretty much every motor. Ah, but what if we increase the flux gap area? We make the motor longer. We go from a 540 to a 550. We were just doing about 11 grams on Deaton Force. Now, what would you guess, just offhand, if we went from 11 to this guy, and uh, let me think real quick, we have a uh, 21 millimeter stack, and this one has, uh, let me just look, what is that, uh, 10 millimeter difference? Uh, let's just say we have like 25% more stator on here. I, I need to do the calculations. I should have done that before. How much more motor do we have? How much more Deaton force do we have? Mmm, 15, 16, 16, 5. All right. Mmm, it's got more. About 25%. <laughs> it's a fairly linear relationship. Not always, but fairly linear. 15, 7, I just saw. There we go. 15.9, 16, 17 for a moment. But uh, 15, 16, and go uh, 15 and change, and we'll go one more, one more again. 16, all right, so about 15. It has a higher Deaton force than the 540. And that is just to say that if you want something with a higher hold, or if your brakes aren't enough, or you need something with more torque, the easiest way to get that is always gonna be a bigger motor. Get something that's longer, get something that's larger diameter rotor, or something that is just physically a larger diameter motor itself, and that's gonna get the solve for you. But it can come with a price. On a brushed motor such as this, the higher Deaton force also makes it start up at a higher RPM. If we compare the same KV between the two, like a 21 turn 550 compared to a 27 turn 540, you're gonna typically find a little higher startup speed when you go to that 550, but again, you get higher torque, higher drag brake on there, higher hill hold on there, all the things that you would want with a bigger motor. So I hope that explains what Deaton Force is for you. If you have any questions or wanna see some different motors tested against each other, certainly leave your comments down below. We'll do our best to get to them. But this is something that has been on my mind for a long time. I always design with Deaton Force in mind. Every motor that I've ever designed, I always wanna make sure that the Deaton Force is exactly what I want to. And the point of all of this is that these days with newer startup routines, we can actually get away with a lot higher Deaton Force, at least in the brushless world. In brushed, it's still gonna be the same trade-offs. You can't really get around it. But in the brushless world, we can get away with a lot higher Deaton Force, which reminds me, I have a sample here that I, I wanted to show y'all. Oh, it's got a five millimeter shaft. I can't actually measure on this particular one. Uh, but this guy, it's, it's just some prototypes that I'm working on, uh, generic housing. It's a four pole and it's nearly impossible to turn by hand. The Deaton force on this is going to be insane. And usually with something like a castle startup routine, even censored, it doesn't want to start up. It sits there and because Castle's trying to, you know, tickle it and start it. But combined with an AM32 startup, we can actually get it going. And long term, that's what we would like to work on. It's something that has that, that stepping startup combined with sensors, but it's a long road to hoe. 
maybe we'll get there one day. But just to show you that <laughs> there certainly are combinations that would be extremely hard to turn by hand. You get it on a side hill or a downhill and it's not got a free coast. But four pole, maybe not the best for crawling, maybe a little bit better for bashing and racing. So that's something that we can talk about on another day. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.